Few could have imagined that we'd be talking about the real possibility of an AIDS-free generation. But that's what we're talking about. That's why we're here. The goal of an AIDS-free generation may be ambitious, but it is possible. We have a historic opportunity to change the course of this pandemic and usher in an AIDS-free generation. We're standing today at the corner of Castro and Market Street in the city of San Francisco. This is also the heart of San Francisco's gay community and the neighborhood that was first impacted by the uh, epidemic that we now call HIV AIDS. Some of us focused on research, some of us focused on prevention education or policy decisions. Some of us marched in protest, worked on harassing the pharmaceutical industry to make new drugs available. Many of us stayed home and cared for our loved ones and roommates and neighbors who were dying. Those of us who lived through that time understand very well the importance of community and what it means to be part of a movement. If we mobilize the resources, if we make treatment available, we can in fact stop the disease. Not mitigate it, not manage it, but stop it. And that must continue to be our ultimate goal. People are living longer, living the quality of life that they deserve to live. People aren't as sick as they used to be. But I also have seen so many people who need to get tested. Cities are beginning to respond. That's a real testament to a world free of AIDS and to grassroots organizations. In each community, you have to have culturally and linguistically appropriate strategies. And so I have a lot of hope, and I hope people are inspired by all of that has been done. Ninety-seven nine, the box. I'm the Mad Hatter. What's up? You know it's going down again. Hip hop for HIV 2012. You've seen them in the past. It's been huge every single year since 2007. Little Wayne, Kelly Rowland, many more. How can you get hooked up? You got to get tested. You have to know your status. In Houston, amongst all of our reported HIV cases among young people, 75% of those are African American. So we definitely knew who we wanted to target and who we wanted to reach to really encourage that group to get tested for HIV. And through the health department's partnership with the radio station, getting the promotion over their airwaves, we were able to reach young kids and really encourage them to get tested and know their status. I can't speak for all jocks. I can speak for me as a black jock. You have the voice and you have a platform that you can use to make things happen. Know your status. Testing it's a part of your job to do things to help out the community. Find a testing location near you. Get tested. Hip Hop for HIV 2012. When I found that I was HIV negative, I was really relieved. But I think the beautiful thing about Hip Hop for HIV is you realize even if you are negative or positive, that life can go on. Thank y'all for coming out. I hope y'all enjoyed nice the show. Very nice to meet you. Can't wait to see you perform. Thanks for knowing your status. In the United States, it's estimated that one in two people with HIV will have a housing crisis at some point in their life. That's an enormous number. For those of us living with HIV, a safe place to call home is at the core of good health. Places like Bettendorf are really a gateway for people who have nowhere to go. We are calling for increased obese housing units and subsidies. These units make all the difference in the world to get somebody off the streets and into permanent supportive housing. If people are in the streets, in the shelters, unstably housed, they can't take their meds, they can't bring their viral loads to undetectability. I was homeless and the Chicago Housing for Health program changed my life completely. Actually something just as simple as a roof over my head gave me a chance to show my full potential. The HIV epidemic in Chicago has been consistently African-American, Latino, 
and among gay men. And we've seen an epidemic among black women, as well as Latino women. We're seeing more young people now. People who get to Vida Sida know that if they're Latino or Puerto Rican, they can come here and find culturally sensitive services. And it is the space where people come to talk about what nobody else is talking about. When nobody was talking about AIDS, we were talking about AIDS. We make condom packets so we can do outreach, so we can send them out into the community. We decided that as a community, we needed to confront the problem of homelessness among our youth and begin to create safe spaces in our community. Our goal is to continue to provide mentorship to LGBTQ Latino specific youth and HIV positive youth to build our youth for the future of tomorrow. I just wanted to get informed and like help educate people around my age how to like protect themselves better and how to like stand up to people who don't want to use protection. To get to an AIDS-free generation, we have to dramatically reduce new HIV infections. We have the tools to do it. The question is, do we have the financial will and the political will to do what has to be done? We have to deal with our own epidemic if we're gonna make a difference around the world. Some of the challenge in North Florida is because we're so isolated and we're so spread out. So much of case management today, they've strayed away from home visits and I always tell my case managers, you can really not understand who you're serving unless you see where they live and how they live. And so we try to provide the services in their home as much as possible. Can I listen to your lungs real quick? You sure may. I was tested positive in June of 93. Oasis has been a huge help. Every so often they'll come by and bring me groceries and visit with me and ask me if there's anything I need. And it's nice to have somebody stop by and check on me other than my family. I mean, to know that there's other people out there that care. Y'all gotta go, honey. All right, okay, well, good seeing you again. Good seeing you. You call me if you need anything. Oh, okay. I will. In rural communities, you have to form partnerships. If you try to go it alone, you're not gonna make it. And, the rural part of Florida that takes a village to provide care for the people because of the isolation. I've been positive for 14 years. Living in rural Florida, you can't just come out and tell anybody that you're HIV positive. You have to keep a lot of it to yourself and deal with it within yourself. Do you want counseling at this time? No, I'm okay right now. It's a struggle every day. And it's taken me a long time to get to the point where I'm at now. But I feel better about myself, and I know that I'm healthy and I can live a long life. And people just need to accept me as I am. Bye. Our job in the early days was that of a hospice worker to train people to die with dignity. And now it's been such a switch to have to train people to live and to plan a future to tell them that they can go to work, they can have that career. Hey, hey, Mr. Anderson, how y'all doing? I was diagnosed in 1995, and I came to get services from Oasis, and they helped me tremendously with my addiction. They referred me to services, and I've been clean for two, two and a half years. The food pantry has really been a blessing because I was only getting like $16 in food stamps. For 15 years of my journey, I have been trying to actually destroy myself and had not I come into services here at Oasis, I would probably already be dead. And because of their love and compassion, I'm still here. And I'm grateful. This has got to be a public-private partnership, and we've got to have government, NGO, civil society, and the business community, the corporate community involved if we're really going to rid the world of HIV and AIDS. There's some serious stuff going on. And this is something that everyone should at least know some about. 
Not only at our jobs, we ought to talk to our kids. It makes you want to get tested. To get rid of discrimination and stigma, we want to educate. So that's why we're here today, is to help to get rid of the myths and give you facts about HIV and AIDS. The strength of it is focusing on the education. It has made a lot of people very aware of HIV and AIDS. That was the strong point where he nailed home about the education, educating yourself about AIDS. I thought it was a great experience. I think everybody should know about it. I'm glad the company had done something like this and hopefully everybody else will learn from it. The Ark of Refuge was the first program to provide housing for African American and other women of color who were living with HIV and recovering from substance abuse. And uh, same thing for trans women. The transgender ministry belongs to all of us. I travel a lot replicating the work of City of Refuge. Now we have churches connected to us, a little better than 100 of them, all over the United States. The faith community has stepped up to the plate and we have many allies now. Out of this terrible disease, these partnerships have developed and these coalitions have developed and we have seen and witnessed some hope. The worst plague of our lifetime brought out the best in humanity. The learning curve that we went through on HIV AIDS was a brutal experience, but 30 years later, we've learned some very important lessons. But I think the central message that we've all had to learn from fighting back against HIV AIDS, the most profound message, is that all of us across this planet, no matter how different we may appear to be on the surface, our lives are irrevocably linked. That's the message. We have to move forward together.